Hey, it's Norm from Tested. Welcome to another how-to project with Frank Ippolito, brought to you by Tested Premium Members. Check out our memberships. That's what allows us to make these videos, show you how to do cool things. Uh, if you've watched this series before, we've done a, cool, a few projects with Frank already. We created an easy like one-sided mold yep. um, for our 3D printed objects to recreate those. We re recreated my hand using uh, an alginate mold. Yep. And today, we wanna to take it one step further, a little more complex, we're doing a two-sided mold. Yep, two-part uh, mold. Two-part mold. So why would someone need to make a two-part mold? Uh, if you have something that you can't just glue down to the table and dump rubber on, you need to have both sides of it. Mm. And maybe you wanna have it so that it opens up so that the piece demolds easier if there's like little undercuts or complicated parts that you can't just yank it straight out. So if someone's a prop maker, for example, mm -hmm. and they make a, a space pistol or an elaborate prop, doesn't have a flat bottom edge. Or if you wanted to make like a hammer or a wrench that was made out of rubber. Yeah. If you wanted, you know, for a prop, like a stunt prop. Stunt casting, like yeah. a, a rubber prop. Yeah, that's, that's used in yep. movies all the time. Well, we're going to recreate a prop today that I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. This is, we're at Adam's shop, obviously, and Adam has allowed us to recreate something he made himself. It's, it's, a, it's not a space pistol, it's a space sword. It's a lightsaber. It's a lightsaber. Did you uh, wear this shirt on purpose today? Of happy coincidences <laughs> all around. Um, this is Luke's lightsaber from, I believe, Return of the Jedi. And what Adam told me was he made this himself based on references from a 1995 Star Wars prop tour exhibit in San Francisco. He actually, that's, that was right before the, the prequels came out. And he went to this exhibit. George Lucas donated all these props to it. He took a ton of photos, and this is one of his, I guess, the lightsaber he made back then mm -hmm. when he was at ILM. Is this the right kind of thing that we want to create a two-part mold? Yeah, from? if we were if we were to just glue it down and dump rubber on here, it wouldn't come out of the castings really good because all these little undercuts and all these little ridges. So right. it's it's best if you want to make a two-part mold on this. All right. So uh, I presume, like the other molds, a one-part mold, we need it's going to be some type of silicone, a molding material. Mm -hmm. And, and then you also want to create a shell for it. So yeah. what's the first step? First step is we are going to clay this up so that we're only going to pour rubber on the first half. Ah, okay. So what we'll do is we'll take a piece of foam core. Mm -hmm. And I've decided that I want to put this on, um, on one side of the mold. So that okay. way I'm not making a seam line across this. This will just come straight out the top. Right. Whereas in a one-part mold, you don't have a seam line unless you cut the mold open uh, because it's the flat base is where you tear it out. We're going to get a seam line. Yeah. One, right once you start getting into two-part molds, you have to think about how it's going to demold, um, when, where you're going to pour the resin in. Like we're going to pour the resin in this flat bottom area, which is really easy. You know, where, how the resin is going to flow and where it's going to go into. Like obviously pouring it from this end is going to be pretty easy because we could just kind of roll it around mm -hmm. and get rid of air bubbles. And then like where the seam line's gonna go, like is it gonna cause any problems with casting, cause any problems with demolding the original. And that's one of those things that like over a little bit of experience and kind of looking at other people's molds and kind of researching how molds are made, you can kind of learn how to find your parting lines and how to find undercuts. With silicone, it's really forgiving. So if I don't get the, uh, the parting line right on the top edge, if it's a little bit one way yeah. or the other, it's not gonna like break the mold. Okay. So it's real easy to start off with silicone because it's forgiving. Okay. All right, so you have the space yep. and you talk about creating a clay. So the mold, the two halves of the mold mm -hmm. are created one at a time. Yeah, we have to put mm. clay to separate the first side that we're gonna pour. Okay. And we're gonna flip it over, pull that clay off and pour the second side. Got it. So I'm using um, a water-based clay just because I can work really fast with it. You can also use soft oil-based clays. There's it's, the company's not in business anymore, but it was called Clean Clay, but a bunch of other companies have made replicas of that clay now. Mm. It's an oil base, it doesn't dry out. This one's a water-based clay, it'll dry out, so I'm just gonna plow through it and get it done right now. You don't wanna let this sit necessarily overnight and come back, because it'll dry and crack. So, I know that I wanna split this right around the, about the uh, center. So I'm just gonna build up clay up to the center. And this is really a, this, the support structure um, so that when you make the mold on, on, when you pour your silicone, which is what the mold material is gonna be, mm -hmm. that's what fills in all the nooks and crannies. The clay right now doesn't need to fill up all the nooks and crannies at all. This clay is only to separate yeah. the, the halves. Half and the bottom yep. half.
I mean, this is a pretty simple object because it's just, it's just round. So finding the halfway point is really easy. How important is it for it to be at exactly the halfway point or for it to be like in a smooth line, a straight line across one of the sides? Um, you want this parting line to be uh, 90 degrees out of the part. And again, this is easy because it's a cylinder to find the center and then to make it 90 degrees from the center point. But, you know, sometimes things get more complicated as, as the models get more complicated. It's really soft. Uh, yeah, when you're using a clay to, to make these dividing walls, it, it uh, goes quicker if you have a soft clay, which is why that the, the clean clay stuff, the oil-based version, is also like a super soft clay. You don't necessarily want to use like a really hard like sculpting clay. You can, but it's easier to have something soft and malleable that you can just lay up these dividing walls really quickly. Frick, I can see as you're smoothing this clay out, it's kind of bunching up closer on the edge of the model. Yeah. Um, that's obviously something you don't want as a part of your mold. So. Well, this tool, what I'm using is, it's just a steel spatula that I'm using just to smooth out and get the lines even. Like I'm looking at it low so mm -hmm. I can make sure that they're- 90 degrees. They're 90 degrees and make sure it's smooth. The next thing I'm gonna come in with is, um, I have a couple of these uh, rubber tip tools. Ah, okay. And since they're rubber, they kind of flex a little bit. And those are the tools that I'll use just to go right up against the, the model. So that way I'm not scratching it. Your excess. Yeah. These work really good. Like if you're molding a clay sculpture and you don't want to like mess it up, mm. use these real soft tools to just kind of clean up that last little bit of your parting edge. Does it really matter what the material, the object you want to create a mold of is made out of when you're creating the mold in terms of deciding your mold material and, and the clay you're using? Um, there's, I mean, there's different Different things you have to take into consideration depending on what the material is and what the what your what ma what material you're going to mold with and what material you're molding of, mm -hmm. like and what you're casting of. Like you have to think about all those things. For the most part, you know, using this water clay or, or a really soft oil-based clay is kind of an easy go-to. All right, now that you've used the these rubber tools to smooth out some of the edges, you're taking a sponge to it. Yeah, I have a like a triangle cut makeup sponge and some water. I'm just kind of smoothing out some of these areas. You can also use a, a brush with some water or, you know, whatever. But I just happen to have a makeup sponge. It needs to be silicone tight. Yeah, you don't want any little gaps um, between the clay and your, your model um, because then the silicone will leak through. Mm. So uh, I see your seam lines. It's perfectly smooth. This is flat. You've brushed over with water. The top part, which is going to be the first part you're going to the mold of, mm -hmm. needs to be really clean. Yeah, the cleaner you make it, the, the better your mold's going to fit together. Okay. But there's two things we got we still have to do. We have to build walls ah. to contain the silicone that we're going to pour on here. Yep. And then we also have to make registration so that the front side of the silicone links up with the back side. So that's something that is specific to a multi-part mold. Yeah. Is registration, and that means. And that means that when you, if you just have two pieces of floppy silicone, they might not line up. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to make little keys in there so yeah. that they do line up. All right, interlocking parts. Yeah. So. I'll take the back side of this tool, which is just a nice little rounded nub. Mm -hmm. I just dip it in a little bit of water and put it in there. It makes these little divots. So, so in terms of how much registration do you need and also how close can that, these keyholes be to the edge of the prop? Um, I don't want to put them right on top of the prop. Like these are probably, I don't know, 3 16 quarter inch away. Okay. Um, but I'm going to go all the way around because what I want is that little edge of the, of the, uh, of the mold, I don't want it to shift. Mm. So if I put all these little registrations on here, it's less likely to shift and the then get- closer a, it is. And then get a step in the mold because you don't want the mold to misalign and then your piece has a step in it. Right. If you keep the end of the tool a little bit wet, it keeps it from um, sticking and it just makes it a nicer little dot. How deep should these registration holes be? Um, I've seen people use things like bolt heads or uh, like half spheres. You know, it, it depends what you want to do, like whatever you feel most comfortable with. These are probably less than a quarter inch deep. So 
So this will get um, good edge registration. But um, once I put these walls up here, I may put another piece of another uh, ribbon of re registration on there, just so that it has multiple things that kind of mm -hmm. make the uh, the silicone hold together. And the silicone will want to grab each other, the two halves. They'll want to grab in, in, the, in the registration holes. That's why it doesn't need to be so deep. Yeah, it'll help. It just helps for alignment. So what I'll do is I'll just take um, a piece of foam core to serve as a straight edge. Okay. And my little metal tool. And I'm just going to cut this excess clay off. Is this clay reusable? Uh, yeah, I've seen people take it and reuse it. Once you put crystal clear on it and you start putting rubber in it, then sometimes it'll get contaminated. But mm. I've seen people use like pick that stuff out and reuse it. It's really cheap. I think a 50 pound box is like 20 bucks. Wow. So it's not expensive at all. All right, time to add some walls. So the next thing. Hot glue. Brought my hot glue gun this time. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll just hot glue these foam core strips to the sides to build walls. Goodness for foam core. I think the best material. Mm -hmm. All right, your walls are in. I noticed you're trying to seal that clay against the wall so the mm -hmm. silicone doesn't fall around the edges because yeah. that's unnecessary. Um, and you really want a tight seal, I guess, between the foam core, the clay, and then also the prop. Yeah, you don't want silicone leaking anywhere. You don't mm -hmm. need it. Um, so I still have a little bit of space here between this dot registration and my walls. Mm -hmm. So, so what am I not make more dot registration? Uh, well, I'm not going to do dot registration. I'm going to do um, like ribbons this time. Ah. So I have a little loop tool, and I just if I make a little wavy line. Um, that just adds another little bit of registration. It's like the first layer of locking, and then the second layer of locking. Yep. This is more kind of broad stroke registration. All right, uh, before we pour the silicone, you're gonna do one more thing. I wanna seal this water clay with some crystal clear. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna put a couple of light coats on there. It'll go on the model too, but it's fine. This is a glossy model. If you want something, if you're gonna mold something that's got a matte finish, you could always hit it with some matte finish from Krylon or uh, dulling spray. Mm. Both of those things also work if you need to take something, take the shine off of something. But this is just to seal it, um, just to help the uh, water clay pull out of the silicone easier. Clear coat, set. Yep, all dry. All right, and of course, you can always rub it off the prop later with alcohol. Yeah, you can take a little bit of alcohol and mm -hmm. take anything off. So you're not doing any permanent damage to anything. Nope. Um, and then the silicone. So this is a very familiar silicone. Yeah, this is 20T, which is the same stuff that we use to mold the hand. Ah, so cast the hand. Cast the hand, yes, right. correct. So yeah. where that project, this is the silicone to make the fake hand. Yeah. This is actually going to be the mold material. Yes, you can use materials for molding or casting. It just depends what you want to do with it. Mm. So they're kind of universal. And silicone, of course, sticks to only silicone. Yep. So, so it won't stick to any of this. Awesome. Um, so I've weighed out two batches of silicone already. I put a little bit of blue pigment in one of them, just so I, when I stir it, I can see that it's all mixed really good. Okay. And as soon as I mix it, I'm going to run over to the evacuator over there and putting in the and I'm going to put this whole thing in the vacuum chamber. What that does is it sucks all the air that I've whipped into it when I'm mixing it. So that way when I pour it, the only air that's going to be in there is stuff that's just going to naturally rise out. For the most part, people aren't going to have a huge deal without evacuating the silicone. I know that I'm probably going to want to pressure cast these things, which means I'm going to put this mold into a pressure tank and put positive pressure on the resin when I cast it. And if I have uh, a silicone that has 
that hasn't been degassed, which is what this is called, um, then it'll get little divots and mm. it'll have an Im imperfect casting. So I want to evacuate the silicone if I'm going to do a pressure casting. That was a fast six minutes. Fast six minutes. All right, the, half the mold is now poured in mm -hmm. in this frame. Um, we have to wait about 30 minutes, mm -hmm. but let's talk about this process. How did you know exactly how much silicone to pour in here for this half? That's simple math. Simple math? Length times width times height. Right, in inches. In inches, okay. times 18.5, which is what we figured out a volumetric square, cubic inch of silicone is. Mm. It's the number we came up with when I was, when I was working at McFarland Toys. Um, and that gives us how many grams of total material we need. Gave me about 1,900 grams for this. I took a little bit out because the lightsaber takes up a little bit of it, so mm -hmm. I guessed about 1,800 grams. Wow. Um, and then I divide that by two, and that's how many grams in each cup I weighed out. That's brilliant. Let's recap that. Figure out the volume of the box yes. by inches. Yes. So for example, if it was a two by two by two box, that's eight cubic inches. Yeah. Multiply that by what you figured out for silicone, 18.5. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do that math. And that is in grams because you want mass. Yes. And so you weigh out that, and that is your total, total volume. silicone volume. Yep. And then you divide that by two for each of the halves, part A and part B. Correct. And then you can estimate out how, how much, much volume you, you think the, you're gonna lose in the yeah. part that's in there. Very cool, and that, that came out just about right. So we'll come back in, the 30, in 30 minutes and do the other half. Yep. Thirty minutes later, half of it's done. Yep. Let's examine the silicone. Oh, that's rock solid. Well, so, rubber solid. Rubber solid. Uh, so this smooth on uh, Mold Cat Star 20T. Mm -hmm. Thirty minutes set time, mm -hmm. about a six minute working time. Yes. So you're gonna make really quick casts or molds with this thing. Yeah. But if you're gonna do a project in one day, it's the right thing to use. It's how to do it. All right. So what's next to get the other side? So what I want to do is I want to take these walls off and not destroy them because I'm going to use them again to, do, to pour the other side. Mm. So we need to tear one side off and if just pop off that silicone. Yeah. So I'm just going to kind of carefully pull them off. It's like baking a cake. You have layers of things. Yeah, why not? All right, all four sides are off. Examine it. You have this top layer of silicone. Great. And then the clay on the bottom. And it's time to just flip it around? Yes. So I'll take another piece of foam cord just because it's clean. I'll flip this guy over. Okay. Then pull that off. Ah. And then carefully just kind of take the clay off. I don't want to dislodge the lightsaber from the silicone. Mm -hmm. I just want to take the clay off. And the clay is still malleable. It's, it's still putty-like, it hasn't hardened yet, and yes, yeah, so you're holding the prop down and then just tearing that off bit by bit. I like the registration marks. So Frank, the thing we're molding right now is fairly, even though it's a two-sided mold, it's still a fairly sol simple object, it's yes. cylindrical. Um, I imagine if someone sculpted something with more detail, you know, overhangs, larger pieces, uh, would it still be the same process? It's basically the same process. You just have to determine where your parting line is going to be. Mm. Um, but again, that goes to how you want to cast it, how the mold gets flipped over, how the part comes out of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of different kind of variables to that. But you know, for basics, like right. just molding 101, doing a two-part, this is a good way to start. Um, I've also seen a lot of people that instead of using this foam core, I've seen them use Lego bricks okay. to build their walls. That way the, the walls are kind of the same size every time. The only thing I don't like about that is a lot of times it'll leave like those little brick lines mm -hmm. and I just like nice clean molds. It's yeah. just a personal preference, but those things work really well also if you want something that's reusable so you don't have to like waste foam core all the time. Got it. I've also made mold walls out of like wood. If I'm doing a larger mold, the weight of the silicone could become a factor and you don't want it to like, you know, bend over the walls of the foam core. 
so you could build the box out of wood also. I mean, basically there's a bazillion ways to do any of these things. This is just like one version, one kind of intro to how to do it. And then you can look up all the different methods and figure out which one might be best for your project. So right now you're scraping off this clay and just like when you were preparing the other side for the silicone milled pour, you want this to be real clean. Yeah. Not just on top of that prop, but also on top of the bottom half. Mm -hmm. break out that sponge. Mm -hmm. Once I get most of the big chunks of clay out, I'll use a little bit of water in the sponge to rinse it all off. All right, that looks like a pretty clean mold in the bottom there. The model's clean. Uh, of course, we use some of Adam's tools here to, to blow off any of the excess residue, but you can just patting it down with paper, cleaning off the mold. Yeah, make it dry. Mm -hmm. So the next thing we want to do is put these walls back up and we'll just kind of reuse all of this stuff. Okay. I'm pretty much just checking the corners to make sure that silicone isn't going to leak out between the, uh, the walls. Just because these are kind of repurposed pieces of foam core, mm -hmm. they're a little crooked, so I just want to make sure they're all sealed up. All right, so that's I'll put back together, and then we'll get it a little spray of crystal clear again. The crystal clear is going to put make a barrier on the silicone, so the silicone doesn't stick to itself. Got it. That's you can really also cool. use spray releases and stuff. So when you're casting, will you need crystal clear every time you make a cast to make sure the two sides don't stick? No, because the, the mold will be cured and okay. be separate. Um, it's a good idea to have some mold release mm -hmm. to you know, the cast your piece in there. The mold will last a little bit longer if you use a release. That's a pretty perfect fit, Frank. Yeah. yeah well, you, did, you did the math. Did the math. Wow, you have a little bit extra, uh, we were just saying earlier, it, it might be good practice to you know, maybe make a one-sided mold. Seems mm -hmm. it's if easy to pour something into if you have extra. You yeah. can work on two projects at the same time. The other thing you can do is, a lot of times I'll leave this rubber in the bottom of a bucket and you could pull it out and then you can use it as like a Bondo mixing pad or right. things like that. So this is still useful. Mm -hmm. Silicone, again, nothing, nothing sticks, sticks to it. To so it's so. almost like a, a flat surface you could work on. Mm -hmm. When I was doing the evacuator, you put the vacuum on mm -hmm. and it rises up and it starts bubbling. And then I had to like let some air in a little bit just because it would have overflown the bucket. So you let the air in just a little bit and then eventually it'll collapse in on itself. And that's huh. when you know that it's completely evacuated. So it rises up and then it drops back down. So when you mix up silicone or any kind of material and you want to put it in an evacuator, you always want to have a bucket that's at least twice the size. Twice the size of how much you of have. The volume that there. you have in there. Well, 30 minutes for this, this set. Yep, then we'll and open it up. We'll open it up and cast something. Frank, we got a mold. This is done. Wow. It's, it's filled up so perfectly. Giant block of rubber. Giant block of two halves yeah. of rubber. So now we open it like Christmas. Demolding. Oh, it's Christmas. Don't you want to help so, out with the presents? Oh, yes. Oh, can I? Oh, is that permission? Oh, it's so, oh, there it goes. So we can just tear apart this wall, tear down this foam core wall. 
foam core walls of oppression. Yes. All right. There we go. Two colors, two halves. I'm going to just take mm -hmm. these. It's why you don't use Lego blocks. Yeah, because if it's Lego blocks, you get all kinds of lines there. These are just all nice and yeah. smooth. It's an aesthetic thing. So then... Um, it's all cleaned up. Oh, you just do, tear it apart. You just separate it. That's yeah. it. Thanks like clear coat. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at the registration. And it's birthing a lightsaber. So there you go. That's the two halves. Oh, that's great. Oops. Look at these negatives. Wow. All right, let's check the lightsaber. Still looks good. See some of the clay here. This will just give this yeah, a we'll nice rub down off. with alcohol. Clean up the molds there. So there we go. Now we have the two halves of the molds, but we need to fill it somewhere. Uh, if you notice, I didn't put any registration right down that's here right. at the end. Because that's so what where I'm, the, you're going to pour in whatever you're going to cast. Yep, we're going to pour. So I'm just going to take this. I'm just going to cut a little channel. Okay. Doesn't need to be that big, right? Mm -mm. Does it matter which side? I'm going to cut both sides. Both sides. You want to kind of plan these molds beforehand. This is a fairly simple, straightforward thing. So to put the pour spout down here where it's a flat place that you can just cut that off and sand it flat makes it really easy. Um, if you have a more complicated thing that has details on all ends, mm -hmm. you have to kind of pick and choose where you're going to put your pour spout. As we talked about earlier, you chose it here because the gravity will help and you'll be able to swirl whatever you cast inside to, mm -hmm. to make sure you have no air bubbles. So before we get to casting, do we need to do any cleanup on the inside of the mold? Yeah, it'd, it'd probably be good to wipe it down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol just to get any residue out of here. Like there might be a little bit of residue from the crystal clear mm -hmm. or a little bit of residue from just little bits of clay that might still be right. in here somewhere. If I was making more production mold, I would spend a lot more time on that wall to make it perfect. We're gonna have to clean up the piece when we pull it out. Yep. But flashing. Yeah, but that's just all about spending more time on the mold, spending more time on that wall. So the better the better you get that wall, that line between the first half and the second half, mm -hmm. the smoother you make that clay, the closer it is to the prop, the less work you put on yourself afterward in mm -hmm. terms of the cleanup yeah. of your cast. So now we have the molds, it's time to cast something in them. Yep. With sil a silicone mold, what can you cast? What type of materials? Uh, you can cast urethanes, epoxies, uh, polyesters, like all kinds of things. Um, if you're going to cast silicone, you have to use certain releases because silicone sticks to silicone. Um, and when you some, mean a release, you mean like a spray or application you, yeah. that coats each of the sides. Yeah, and different releases work with different products. You, you got to look at all the information and stuff like that. If I was going to cast silicone in here, I would probably use like Ease Release 300 or, uh, or just dish soap. You can take dish soap and just Oh. Work it up into a lather, and that's usually a good enough release. You just cool. want to create a barrier. So what are we casting in here today? Well, these molds are a little are floppy, as silicone is. So what we did is we cut some pieces of wood. So when we put these together, we'll strap it with wood, and that'll keep it mm. rigid, and it'll keep it even pressure. Because I don't want to take a mold, and I don't want to clamp it like here and here and here, because then it'll pinch it. So if you put it on a piece of wood, it'll give it even pressure all the way around when cool. you... Um, strap it together. Nice. And looks like we have some uh, resin over there. Yep. Let me just rubber band these together. So when we're talking about the proper care of a mold, like this mold using silicone, you said it lasts up to maybe like 50 times. You can cast them if you treat it well. If you treat it well, you you know, if you use resins that aren't going to get super hot and burn out the mold. Mm -hmm. this and that means a, a longer setting resin. Usually, yeah. Um, these are platinum silicone, so this one will probably last longer than like a tin-based silicone. Um, so just, you know, things like that can help you make a, a mold last longer. Using spray releases, you can use like Ease Release 200 or a lot of other things just to help, you know, um, keep down the wear and tear on the molds. Got it. So that's all strapped up. I brought some resin. This is uh, Smoothcast 45D. 45 is the durometer on a D scale, which goes back to right. all of our right. you know, different so things. So when we it. talked about this, this here, this is 20T, yeah. and that's 20 on the T scale. No. <laughs> no? The T stands for translucent, ah, but it's 20 on an A scale. Was... A scale is for soft things. D scale is for rigid things. Mm -hmm. And then there's a double O scale, which is for gels. 
Real soft. Really soft. Yeah. Okay. So I'll mix up some resin. Not 100% sure how much goes in there. We'll eyeball it. There's all kinds of ways that you can um, estimate how much resin to go in there. You could put rice in there or mm -hmm. sand or water or all kinds of things to estimate. Okay. We're just going to go for it. Okay. Eyeballing by volume. So because it has all these ridges, in yeah. it, I'm going to pour in some and I'm going to kind of roll it around, which will kind of coat the inside of the mold mm -hmm. and kind of help it so that it hopefully doesn't trap as many air bubbles. Now we evacuated this resin, so we could also put it in a pressure tank, but Adam doesn't have a pressure tank here. It's okay just to wait, let it wait and, and have, you know, maybe minor air bubbles in the resin, mm -hmm. give it a textured look. If you're using a resin that's clear, you can mix colors in it, mm -hmm. um, or you can just finish it later. All right. Uh, you've poured in the resin. Mm -hmm. This resin, you had a, about a five, six minute work time. Yeah. And then another 30 minutes of cure time. Yeah. And you can get resins with different work times. Mm -hmm. This just happened to be the one that I grabbed. Okay. So uh, let's come back in 30 minutes and then pop this open and see yep. if we have a lifesaver. Cool. I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. It's like Christmas all over again. No, let's break this mold open. So, uh, a lot of rubber bands added. I noticed that you stacked more rubber bands at the bottom. Yeah. Because that's where whatever you're going to cast this in, like resin, silicone, gravity is going to push that to the bottom. Yeah, you're going to have hydraulic pressure, and so you're probably going to want a couple more at the bottom. And it's okay if, you know, some stuff seeps out in the very beginning. Cause, you know, you know you have a, first you know, casting out of the mold, you, you have to learn some of the nuances of how the mold runs. Right. So we might open this and we might go, oh, there's some air bubbles. We need to do something different next time. Half it could, it could be empty. <laughs> yeah. Never, never, no, Schrodinger's casting right now. That so looks there we go. Good. That looks pretty good. Um, wow. You know, maybe next time we'll add some pigment to the resin. Yep. Or try maybe a different material. Yeah. Uh, urethane. But this is, oh, it's a little warm. It's a little it's, warm. It's yeah. still not all the way done. But this here is our resin lightsaber casting. Um, and let's get up close here because you can see like right here just some of that flashing. Tiny bit, not Tiny very much. Bit. It, um, and this can be cleaned up. Yeah. Just, just, you sand it down. Sand it down, take a file. Yep, no problem. There's, There's a little bit of air bubbles here. up there. But again, when we run the next one, maybe when I put that last little bit in there, I roll this end. Because mm -hmm. see, I rolled all these and there's not really much of any air trapped up here, which is where I was worried but I didn't roll this last little bit. So right. when I do that, just roll the mold a little bit. And so learn the nuances of every mold you're making. So but for a first casting, I'd yeah. say that that's, you know, B plus. <laughs> B plus, <laughs> I would grade yourself. Uh, what can you do to finish um, something like this kind of resin? Well, I mean, you'd want to sand it and maybe primer it, and then you can paint it with just about whatever you want. If we were going to give it a finish like this, we might want to send it to get vacuum metalized or chromed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't need a machine, you can machine one yeah. and make a, make a lot of copies. Of copies. You, can make, you can make a rubber one and that way you can hit people with it. Oh, if only Luke knew it was so easy. I'm beginning Return of the Jedi. Thank you so much, Frank, for, for teaching having us two-part molds. Now we have this mold so we can just experiment different materials and we yeah. can make different castings. And thank you Tested Premium members for bringing this video series to Tested. We'll have more how-tos, more projects in the future. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet, and check us out on Tested.com. Frank Abolito's website, frankabolito.com. I'm Norm, it's Frank. See you next time. Joey, you can add special effects to this, right? Yeah. Give me a lightsaber. I'll give, I'll give you the sound effects, you do the visual effects. Make it green, make sure it's green, just like Luke's. Whoa, 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 whoa.